morning. We're turning into uh, 2 Kings, if you have the word, 2 Kings chapter 7, starting at verse 1. Elisha said, Hear the word of Adonai, thus says Yadonai, tomorrow about this time. A measure of fine flour will sell for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. And then the officer on whose hand the king was leaning responded to the man of God. He said, look, even if Adonai should himself make the windows open up in heaven, could this thing happen? And he announced, behold, you will see it with your own eyes, but you will not eat any of it. You have to understand the back story here. The back story is Israel is being uh, persecuted by the enemy. They're surrounding the city. The food is scarce. If you could find food, it was extremely high. People had, they were so hungry, they were eating animal dung. It was bad. And so you got to be pretty hungry to eat stuff like that, you know. And so here he is. The prophet stands up and says, by this time tomorrow. So it goes on to say, verse 3, Now there were four men with tsa'arat, leprosy, at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, Why should we sit here until we die? If we say, let's go into the city, then the famine is in the city, so we'll die there. But if we sit still here, we'll die here. And so come, let us go into the camp of the Arameans. And if they spare us, we'll live. And if they kill us, we'll just die. And so they got up at twilight to go to the camp of the Arameans. But when they had arrived at the edge of the Aramean camp, behold, say that with me, behold, behold. no one was there. For Adonai had caused the army of the Arameans to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses. Indeed, a noise of a huge army. And so they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites kings of the Egyptians to assault us and so they got up they fled at twilight abandoning their tents their horses donkeys the entire camp just as it was and they fled for their lives and when these men with Sa'arat came up to the edge of the camp they entered into one tent they ate they drank they took from their silver and gold and clothes and then they went and they hid them and then they returned and they went into another tent and they took from there too and they went and they hid them and then they said to each other it's not right what we're doing This day is a day of good news, and we're keeping it silent. If we wait until the morning light, punishment will overtake us. So now let's go and report to the king's household. And so they came and they called out to the city gatekeepers. They told them we went to the camp of the Arameans, and look, there was not a single soul there, no human voice, just the horses and donkeys tied up. The tents, just as they are, and the gatekeeper called out, and it was reported to the royal palace inside. Father, bless your word. You may be seated. Just briefly today, we are in a season, I was reminded as I'm looking at this of the season that we're in as a nation, speaking a, on an individual level, you have four men with tzarat, that's a leprosy type of skin disease, they were singled out, they were away from the entire community, they were, they were by themselves, out, probably outside the camp by the gate where all the business took place, and it's interesting because they sat there for so long, hear me when I say this this morning, they sat there in a place of if, if we move and we go forward, we're going to die, if we stay here, we're going to die, <laughs> so Have you ever found yourself between a place where you say, we're darned if we do and we're darned if we don't? So we don't know what to do. And so what did they do? They said, "Um, look, if we stay here, there's there's no hope. So we're going to we're going to move. We're going to trust. We're going to move. And I want to challenge you this morning with this thought. Some of you find yourself in a place of you don't know what to do in a situation in your life right now. And you say, well, I know if I stay in that situation and I don't do anything, I'm going to die. What kept them from moving forward, the life of a believer is always progressing forward. And you're always moving and there's always these cycles of time. And isn't it interesting that what kept them back was fear. Fear of the Arameans. Fear of man kept them from moving forward into a place of faith where they would receive and receive the blessing of the prophet's word. Are you with me this morning? And many times we look out there and we see even in the communities of believers, people are afraid to press on because of the fear of the adversary. Well, we can't go there. We can't do that. Or we're not going to do that. And people are afraid. But you have to realize you can't stay back where you are in your step of faith now. You have to keep moving forward. Turn to your neighbor and say, keep moving forward. 
And so if we stay, you know, if we stay in this place, but if we just move forward, and I love it because in the Hebrew where we said behold, you know what that is? It's surprise. <laughs> and isn't it interesting that if you read that in, the, in some of the translations, it literally says they, they went forward and then surprise, the situation totally changed. When Adonai does a suddenly in our lives, everybody say suddenly. When he does a suddenly in your life, He's going to do it as you take a step of faith and you progress. It doesn't mean that you have to make it work. It just means that you say, I'm believing his word and I'm going to step out in faith and keep moving. Keep moving. Keep pressing forward. Don't hide behind things. Don't get and shrink back and go, oh, we're all going to die. Have you ever met people that do that? Don't go forward. We're, you're going to die. Be a people of suddenlies. I truly believe that we're in a season of suddenlies right now. We're coming into a season of suddenlies. And with our natural eye, it looks like everything has gone to heck in a handbasket. But if we'll just keep taking that step forward, we're going to see some suddenlies in this season. Just like we saw the Hebrews experience the suddenlies of being delivered from Egypt. Just like the, the resurrection from the grave of Messiah Yeshua. How many know that was a suddenly? And so we're in a season of suddenlies, and I'm, I keep hearing that in my spirit, suddenlies. We have to be prepared. And the suddenlies are good. It doesn't mean you're not going to be tested, but you have to be ready for the suddenlies. Don't, don't keep yourself in a place of fear, but keep stepping forward by faith. Amen? Thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you for the season of suddenlies, and do awesome things in our lives in Yeshua Messiah. All his people said, Amen. Amen. Elihana, would you please come? Let's welcome Elihana Aliyah this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. It's such a blessing to be here again with Mishpacha at Sar Shalom. And just in time before Pesach. I want to invite you all to stand on your feet if you can and let us worship Adonai. Hallelujah. We praise Adonai. Abba, we thank you. We continue in your presence. And Abba, we thank you because you are great and worthy of praise. You have redeemed us. You sustained us, Father, with your sovereign power. And you have delivered us. And we praise you and exalt you this morning because you are worthy of all the honor and the praise. Thank you for the health. Amen. Thank you, Father, for rescuing us, for delivering us. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Abba, that through Messiah Yeshua, we have received redemption, our land. And we thank you, Adonai, in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Let us rejoice. Inema tov. Umanaim, Shevet Achim Gam Yachad. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we rejoice in your presence. Hallelujah. Let's sing together. Hallelujah. Come on, let us rejoice. Hallelujah. And this Shabbat, we worship you, Adonai, together in unity. Hallelujah, Beyaha.
let's sing together in Nemato. In Nemato, Uman Hai, Bebe Kadil Berga. In Nemato, Uman Hai, Bebe Kadil Berga. Hallelujah. He is our master, our savior, our healer. Adonai, he is on the throne. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem Kvod Malchuto Leulam Vaed. Every tongue and every tribe shall confess Adonai Echad. Hallelujah. Even in the four corners of the earth. Amen. He is on the throne. Let's sing together and rejoice. Let's dance in his presence with holiness. We praise him, hallelujah, in the beauty of his holiness, hallelujah. Kadosh, hallelujah. We praise you, we praise you. The joy of Adonai is our strength, amen? amen. Let us rejoice this morning, Shabbat. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to sing together, He is on the throne. And this song is not yet on YouTube, so we are sharing here with Sar Shalom. Even before it will get online with our Mishpacha. So let's rejoice. Come on, Mishpacha. He is on the throne.
Hallelujah. He's on the throne. Adonai, we worship you. Come on, let's sing together. My master, my fortress, my savior, my healer, my Abba. He is on the throne. My master, my fortress, my savior, my healer, my Abba. He is on the throne. He is on the throne. You were on the throne. Hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Amen. We praise you, Adonai. We are sealed with the spirit and the fire. But I will go to you. Yes. Amen. That's good. Spirit and fire. We are sealed with the spirit and the fire and the blood of the Lamb. But before this. Hallelujah. How many of you are sealed with the fire of Adonai? Yes, the Holy Spirit fire. And how many of you have the mark of the blood in your life? So if you have it, rejoice it. Today, you confess, I have the mark of the blood as it was passed over before. That is a remnant in this age that is filled with the Spirit and walks in victory, and is a remnant of power, a remnant of ruach, amen, and that is marked with the blood. So if you are, stand up, and let's declare. If you can stand up, I'm not commanding you, but if you can. <laughs> yeah, and, but you, I know that you declare. Declare with authority. Because you need to know what you carry. This is not a matter of us singing. You have to sing. You have to say and declare, I have the mark of the blood in my life. Amen. Yes, the enemy tried to come, but he's on the throne. He got, give us victory. The arm of Adonai will fight for me. Amen. So we come here, Abba, to worship you, to declare that we trust in that blood. If you trust in the blood, just declare it today, the mark they have in you, and rejoice because Passover is today for you. Passover is today for us. Amen. How many things that the Lord is delivering us from, we don't even know. Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So rejoice. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we say hallelujah? Amen. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. We are sealed. Yeshua said, I will not leave you orphans, but I will go to the Father and ask him to give you the Spirit, and he will be with you all days. Yeshua will baptize us with the Spirit and fire. Who he blessed Adonai are a 
There's more to walk in. Amen. Oh, yes, we can continue with the spirit in fire. Amen. We believe that. And we continue just with this worship, spirit in fire. Hallelujah. But we just ask you, Lord, that you pour out your spirit. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeshua said, I will not leave you orphans, but I will go to the Father and ask him to give you the spirit, and he will be with you all days. Yeshua will baptize us with the spirit and fire. Hallelujah. We declare it. Hallelujah. We carry the mark of his blood. No plagues until our day. There is a sign out our door. No blood and no evil in And no weapon. Formed against the shall be able to stand. We are sealed. We are sealed with the spirit, the fire, and the blood of the Lamb. We are, we are sealed with the spirit. When the enemy comes like a flood, we'll fear no man. In his spirit, a banner of fire, no one can curse who he bless. Adonai, our avenger, in him we rest.
Lord of Lords, we exalt your name. Hallelujah. Praise his name. Amen. Hallelujah. Mom, Dr. Hadash, are you ready to share from the word? Hallelujah. And how many of you are rejoicing in his presence, just enjoying, hallelujah, worshiping together? Amen. Be with us on the Pesach. So much more to come. Amen. And later on. Amen. Hallelujah. I am so joyful that I have a blood that sanctify me, that equip me, that fights for me and for you. Amen. Because whatever the devil intended for evil, Adonai will change for good. I heard something <laughs> that somebody said that the devil, he doesn't know, but he's fulfilling prophecies. Even in your life, in my life. Yes. It's fulfilling prophecies. Because without the, the, the battles that we have, without the wars we have to face, we have no victory. When you walk in victory, it's because you pass through a battle. When you walk in victory, it's because you had to face a war. Amen. So how many of you had to face wars? Oh, we had to face wars. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. We didn't even plan to bring that song. I said, Hannah, don't bring that song. And I didn't talk to the precious sisters to prepare a tent for us to pass under. That means his glory, that we are walking in the glory, in the Shekinah of Adonai because of the blood. Because of the blood. Hallelujah. Whatever we face through the deserts of our lives, we are tabernacle marked with the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to start. Do you think that Pesach is a Jewish feast? Well, you know, I, I, I try to come here with something new, but you guys know everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> okay. I'll try, okay? Rabbi, you do a great job. The only thing that I don't like here is that the pulpit is too high for me. You hear me preaching? Next time I'm going to ask to prepare a little bench for me. But I always preach down and down there, but did nobody give me a place there, so I will accept this one. <laughs> but let's go for... I can't stand here. I'm so sorry. I got to go down. <laughs> I, I want to be close to the people. You know? So do you think then that this is for Israel, right? The feast is for Israel. But it's also for the foreigner. It's also for the foreigner. It's, it's also for those that decide to sojourn with Israel. So are you part of Israel? Yes, you are a common, uh, a, a common citizen of Israel. And I was reading a book of some fellow today, uh, the, this week, and he said, no, no, no. You can have a passport of a nation, but you are not a citizen of the nation. Listen, you are a citizen, and you are also part of Israel as everybody else. Amen. <laughs> you know why I love King David? Who can guess that if you guys know me? Because he was short. I love him. One day I want to see him in heaven. And he's going to tell many stories for us. Amen. And we always have our favor. Thank you so much for your mercy. 
Hallelujah. This is mine now. It's mine every time I have this. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, look. Exodus 12, 19 says, For seven days no leaven shall be found in your house. They are saying, yeah, you got me. So, did you take the bread out of your house? I'm questioning. Yes. And also, did you take the leaven out of your heart? So, the word says we should celebrate the feast without the east of malice. And so we should pray right now. Father, we pray right now in the name of Yeshua. That right now as you're giving us through the Holy Spirit this food, the spiritual food. We ask that you remove the leaven out of our hearts. We choose to forgive every single one in our families. Our loved ones that despise us. Those that rejected us. Our friends that turned the back on us and betrayed us. We choose today because Yeshua said, if they rejected me, they will reject you also. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. So we thank you for being a partaker of the, the, the pain of Yeshua, of rejection. And we release that rejection. We release, we give it to you. We, we, we take it out of our lives and we accept it as honor. And we thank you for honoring us by calling us to have a heart like yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for calling us to, to have the revelation of the arm of Adonai. Amen. So the arm of Adonai is a subject of today. Why we have to speak about the arm of Adonai? Because that is a beautiful revelation. You're going to have Pesach, and you're going to know what we have in that plate. How many of you already celebrated Pesach? How many of you already celebrated Pesach? How many of you have celebrated Pesach in the past? Hello? Coffee, someone? Okay, what is in the center of the plate of Pesach? Yes, it's called the Zroah. So, can you please place up the picture of the plate? Please. Why we want to say that? Because the arm of the Lord has delivered the people of Israel from bondage and from slavery. And the arm of Adonai has delivered us from sin, has saved us. And the arm of Adonai is the piece of the lamb that is in the center. It's called for all the Jewish people, for all the synagogues, for all the congregations, is called Zeroah. Hallelujah. He brought one. I hope you didn't bring it from your dog. <laughs> See? He brought it. That's a Zeroah. It is the, it is the part of the, 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 chank, the chank of the lamb. So it's called Zeroa. And that is the lamb. So the lamb is the arm of the Lord. We just need to connect. So the lamb is the arm of the Lord that is in the center of our lives. It's, it's the center, is the deliverer. The arm of Adonai is Yeshua. Hallelujah. Now, why did Yeshua come before the Holy Spirit? He said, I am going to the Father. I'm not going to leave you uh, fatherless. Fatherless, but I will go to the Father, and I will ask him, and he will send you who? The Comforter, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is also the sword of the Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit that fights for us. 
When you speak the word, you are executing the vengeance of Adonai, the written judgments of, the, of Psalm 149. And what do you do? You speak in the word and sword is coming out of your mouth. Exactly what's going to happen when Messiah comes. The description is that he's going to have a sword out of his mouth. And Yeshua, he brought the sword. How can Adonai execute the vengeance without the arm? So who holds the sword? Yeshua holds the spirit. So it's a continuation. Because Yeshua, he was not created. Yeshua was begotten. So the father, he made his arm become his son and come to the earth and gave a form of a man. How can he be so perfect? How can he be so, so loving? And let's read Exodus No, sorry. Leviticus 24, 22. The same law that comes for the stranger comes for you. You shall have the same law for the stranger and for the one from your own country. For I am Yahweh, your Elohim. So, it's for you. Let your people or whoever knows you say, mm, you're becoming like a like a, uh, you know, too much legalistic, but you say, trust the word. I am part of Israel. Deuteronomy 16, 16. Why they had to go three times a year to Jerusalem to bring the offerings unto him. And still he, he knew, Adonai knew that wouldn't, wouldn't be at Jerusalem anymore. Many times they were not there. They were in exile. And also no Beth Hamikdash, no temple. And still he said this is a commandment forever. So if you are in Jerusalem or if you are not in Jerusalem, you should keep that feast that belongs to him. But why he says three times a year all your males and shall appear before Adonai your God in the place he chooses at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, at the Feast of Weeks, and at the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before Adonai, Yahweh, empty-handed. Ooh, nobody likes too much to, to understand this, but it's true. You know why you have to bring something? Because he needs your offering. He needs your, does he need all that offering from you? He's the owner of everything, silver and gold. But when you bring according to your gratitude of what you received. You are, you are obeying in a portal that is open at those days. The days, why this day is called appointed times? Why is appointed time? Is the portal, the portal of Adonai at the streets is, is looking down to bless, to prosper. Why they bring the offers? Because they want to have a good harvest. And then they come they, they go and they, after the Pesach, nobody say about that, but the first fruits, they had to go to the field every day to pick up everything that was good. All the sheep, the sheep that they had to pick up, they had to give it to the Lord and bring it to him for 50 days. That's why we say counting of Omer. What's the counting of Omer? You're getting prepared for Shavuot. You're getting prepared for Pentecost. And then it's seven weeks, 49 days, and then the 50th day, you come and bring all to him. Amen? So why should I go back? I already gave my Pesach offering. And he said so because he wants to bless you. He said so because he wants the way that he wants, not the way that you want. It's not the way the church wants. I'm sorry for saying that. Not the way pastors want. Amen. 
It, it, <laughs> I don't want to say nothing. <laughs> but sometimes, sometimes they like that, right? Wow, if I discover that, I can do that. It's going to be a blessing. Three times you've got to come and bring great offerings. First fruits offerings. Besides this, besides that. But what about Shabbat? Ask me the blessings if you tell me and you do it with me to keep the Shabbat. Then I will see. And also what is important, what do you do with my offerings? You have food in the house of the Lord? I have never seen a congregation eat so much like you guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Rabbi, you're making fat sheep. Because the food is good. And when I come here, I got to go back home and I, I, I gain three pounds. <laughs> it's true. And, and guess what? Always he want to take us out to eat. So yesterday when he wanted us to take, we got out the airplane. And then he said, you guys are hungry? We said, no, no. Let's go to the supermarket, buy broccoli and buy salad. So we're, we're trying to keep our diet. Because you're not going to make us fat again. So, hallelujah. Everything was created by the hand of Adonai. Colossians 1.17. Colossians 1.17. How can, as he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And everything was made by him, by the hand of Adonai, which is Yeshua himself. Isaiah 59, 1, behold, Adonai's, Yahweh's hand is not shortened that cannot save, nor his ear heavy that he cannot hear, and also cannot bless. Yes, he wants to bless. It's his will to bless. It's his will. Why he tells people to bring offerings? Because he wants to bless. Just because of that, because he's testing our hearts. So Psalm 91 Psalm, Psalm 98, 1. Or oh, sing to Adonai Yahweh a new song. We just have a new song to release here. That is a new song, our offering to him, Elihana's offering to him, of our deliverance and our victory over everything that we had to pass last year. And we come to worship him. And we come to say he's good, his mercy endures forever. And he has done great things. Oh, sing to Adonai a new song. For he has done marvelous things. He has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. Your victory is his victory. When he glorifies his name in your life, and you go through all that trouble, and you go smiling, he's glorifying himself. He doesn't glorify only when you get a new car and people see, ooh, what a nice car. No, it's good to be blessed like that. But he also is glorified when we are suffering with a smile because the hearts of people are touched. I can say that Elihana had to face so many challenges with a smile as many of you pray for her and I want to thank you for praying. But... That smile was the trust that his hand is holding her. And in that, many people come and to ask for prayer and to come and say, please pray for me. And I see God in your life. Sometimes people see God in our lives through our deserts more than through our victories. And he trusted us with the that, wow, the wilderness, that he brings us to wilderness to humble us and to see what is in our hearts. Yeah. And I know everyone has wilderness, but we are celebrating that he took us out of the bondage. Hallelujah. Even we pass through wilderness, we are going to the promised land. Amen. 
We are seeing him face to face. He's revealing himself to us. So we're celebrating not only the Pesach of the, the, the people of Israel that were delivered from bondage. We're celebrating our Pesach. Our personal Pesach. Amen. So Isaiah 34. My, 34, 5 to 7. For my sword shall be baden in heaven. Indeed, it shall come down on a dome and on the people of my curse. Uh oh, what is that? People of my curse for judgment. Nobody wants to think that he speaks like that, but you know what? The sword of Adonai Yahweh is filled with blood. And he's made overflowing with fatness. You know why? Because he's a just Elohim. He is going to confront the enemies for your sake and for my sake. He is going to do victory. Because he is the God of love and a God of justice. Nahum 1, 2 to 8. He's a jealous Elohim. He's jealous for you. He's jealous for you. And we shall also... We shall declare the day of vengeance of Adonai is in Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news to the poor and to, to show his love, but also to speak about his vengeance. Amen. He has a day of vengeance. The spirit of Adonai is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good things, tithes to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, and also to proclaim the acceptable year of Adonai and the day of vengeance of our Elohim, to comfort all who mourn. Why to comfort all who mourn comes after the day of vengeance? You know why? Because you sometimes see things that you say, oh, this is not fair. Right? We see sometimes people that are nice being so oppressed. It's like Yeshua told me many days ago, he says, think about the parable of the rich and Lazarus. The parable, why Yeshua wants us so much to remember that parable of rich and Lazarus? Because the rich is in the slippery places. And even those that, that don't know Yeshua, they have Moses and the prophets. But they don't want to believe the prophets. Many of Jewish, what I tell my friends that Jewish people, you have to study your own prophets. Let's study our prophets and then we will understand. Because they don't understand their prophets, so they won't see Messiah. So they have to stop listening to the rabbis and go to the prophets. Because the day of vengeance of Adonai is coming soon. So he's jealous. I was saying Naum, one. He's a jealous. And Adonai Yahweh that avenges. Adonai Yahweh avenges. And he's furious. Adonai will take vengeance on his adversaries. And he reserves wrath for his enemies. And when he, speak, he speaks about Edom here, remember that Edom, well, every time in the Bible that he speaks about Edom is Jordan. Every time you read Edom is Jordan. And every time he speaks about Elam, let's say, let's read and now we are all speaking about Iran. So it's Jeremiah 49, 35. Please, if you can place that for me. You know who is going to break the bow of Elan? Adonai. What is the bow? It's, it's, a, it's a platform that is something that is used to throw arrows. So they throw missiles. But you know, do you know that Adonai already used Israel to break the bow of the land last week. Say hallelujah. Yes. He already broke. And then we were praying and fasting. Our group of prayer praying. Break the bow of the land. But there is more bows to be broken. More. Amen. So he already did it. And victoriously we know. Imagine we had no fatalities. No fatalities. Our Air Force of Israel was strong, flying over 
in strategic points because just to say we can break the bow of Allah because Adonai is with us. Amen. So let's go to the next. I want to soon ask Elihana to come and sing the song that we, we have obeyed the Lord and we have composed. Actually, we are releasing the song we, today here for the first time, premiere for Sasha Long. Amen. <laughs> Elihana getting ready. I want you to know what matzah is. What is matzah? What's the word matzah? That is a bread without leaven. What's the word matzah? Is the bread of affliction. And also matzah is come, comes from the word matzileno, matzah. Matzileno means delivering, deliver us. So when you are eating the bread, it's not only the bread of affliction. It is the bread of deliverance. You have to eat the bread. Because also you see the stripes in Yeshua that is deliverance. In Yeshua that is healing. Amen. So when we eat the bread, when we're going to be together with un unleavened bread, meaning Yeshua, the stripes, we remember who is your deliverer. Hallelujah, Adonai Echad. Today we spoke Shema two, two times here. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Why the word Adonai is twice? Why? Is that why he repeat? Why he repeats like this? Because Yeshua is sitting at the right side of the Father. Adonai said to my Elohim. Sit down at my right side and you will put your enemies under your footstool. Do you have your enemies under your footstool? Can you stand up? Can you worship him? Matsilenu. The word is Matsilenu. Can you say Matsilenu? He delivered me. I want you now, when you do in that song, I want you to think about how many Pesach, how many Passovers you had in your life. How many things he delivered you from. From diseases, from rejection, from, from financial disaster, from so many things. And you are here. You are here. Just tell me, I am here. I am here. I'm surviving because of my deliverer. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? That says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will break the bow of Elam. The foremost of their might. When you say the written judgments, you got to say, Abba, Daddy, you spoke that. The Lord said that to Prophet Jeremiah. Hmm? That says, Adonai Tsevaot. Huh? Behold, I will break the bow of the land. And he's doing it. Hallelujah. And he's breaking, he's breaking curses. He broke curses in your life. Can you rejoice? Matsileno. So I want you to remember, he's not only the best for Israel at that time. He's from that time, today, and forever. Amen. So it's for now also. Hallelujah. Adonai Matsileno. Let us sing together. And the lyrics will be on the screen. And we're going to sing together. That Adonai delivers us. He is our deliverer and our healer. Adonai Matzil Sheli. He is our redeemer. Hallelujah. Praise Adonai. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> of affliction you have delivered me you're the lifter of my head you have opened my red sea when the enemies pursue me 
and I have no place to pass. You hear my cry for mercy, my deliverer acts fast. You are my healer and my deliverer. By your mighty hand, I'm a sin Hallelujah, we praise you, Adonai. Matsileinu, oh, hallelujah, our deliverer. Hatsileinu with He, it means also as a prayer, um, deliver us. And at this time, Lord, we pray at such a time as this, uh, but we need, again, your hand of deliverance over your people, your remnant, and as well for Yerushalayim. And for Israel and United States, Lord, we just pray that you rise up as we sing together. Hallelujah. Adonai delivered us from Egypt's Pharaoh to Iran, from wars and persecutions. Once again, Abba, we pray, Adonai, uh, that you rescue your people in the name of Yeshua, Lord. And this time of Pesach. We pray and intercede on behalf of Israel and on the United States of America, Lord, that you will intervene this year and that you will, Father, remove 
Father, hallelujah, in the name of Yeshua, uh, every, um, every hindrance, Lord, um, for uh, revival in the, our nations, and we pray in the name of Yeshua, Lord, that um, I even, I pray, Lord, uh, leaders it, that perhaps they don't look to Adonai, they're not obeying, they're not serving you. We pray that you remove them from places of leadership and put in, Father, people who fear your name, who love you. And, um, well, Lord, that we pray that your will be done and your kingdom come, Abba. And we just pray for a shifting in our nation, Lord. And people will fear your name, that they will come to, and, and have reverence to the name of the God of Israel and the word of God in the name of Yeshua. Oh, Father, we pray for Israel as well, uh, for our armies. We pray for the United States and for Israel that you pour out your blessings and of wisdom and discernment and the fear of the Lord and guidance for such a time as this, as Iran chants death to America, death to Israel. We speak life. We speak revival, and we speak, for Father, that you, Father, will fight for your people and deliver us. Matzileinu. This Pesach, deliver Israel. Deliver us, Lord. In Yeshua's name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I fell. You can sit, please. When I heard her singing that song, she had the surgery the day before. And she had almost couldn't speak, but she could sing with that voice. You know who is to be glorified? Yeshua and the Holy Spirit. Because it's supernatural. I got out and said, you know, what is that? So his power is made perfect in our weaknesses. That's why he likes to glorify himself. When we are running out of power, then he said, that's it. Remember Moses, all the people who had to cross. The enemy was coming. There was no place. He looked behind and actually, we're going to sing that song, and we are going to rejoice in that song. Is it the song of the sea? And, but tomorrow, amen? You come tomorrow, we are going to sing the song of the sea. Because the song of the sea is very important. It was, it was written by Moses, not by anybody. And then he, he saw the enemy coming with the chariots. And then what happened? No place to run. Sometimes you are in a situation like that. You have no place to go. If you don't open the Red Sea for me, I'm going to perish. That's also for, was for Hadassah. If we perish, we perish. So do you believe that Moses was waiting for all that water to be clear and everybody? I don't believe so. I believe they had to go to some water around there so... They were also tested, you know. Hallelujah. The Lord, sometimes he waits to the last minute. Amen. <laughs> but he's never late. Amen. <laughs> never late. Sometimes you say, you're too late. And you say, no, my time is not your time. So I was uh, uh, sharing some things with Rabbi, and um, we are now, by his mighty hand, we were put in Miami and in the building that after a dream in Israel, she had a dream, and I had a dream. We were living in Israel. Everything was beautiful, and the Lord gave the awful dream to her. And she never dreams, and I never dream. And by the same time, I had a dream. So she woke up, she said, I had a dream. I said, I had a dream. So she said, Mom, in front of us here, we saw a lot of missiles and something coming like a big, a, like a big uh, wave. And we were running. And I had a dream that a train was taking us 
and the Lihana was holding everything of the ministry, this little suitcase she carries and everything. And the train was closing, closed. And then I, I shouted, I see you in Aventura. Aventura? That's the place. And then we come, end up coming to here, to America. And guess where we live? In Aventura. He prepared a place for us. And we didn't know. I said, why Aventura? Spanish people? What's going on here? But guess which language we speak more in Aventura? Hebrew. All the Israelis come. Many Israelis. We have many Israelis and many Russians, many Ukraine people. Of course, we got many Spanish people. But we mostly are in a Jewish community that were forgetting about everything. They were going to the diaspora misery, forgetting Shabbat, forgetting feast, forgetting everything. And look what happened. The Lord put us there. And <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he wants me to share this. The first, and then guess where we live? In an apartment. And next to us, we live in the lobby. And next to us, it was an abandoned synagogue. I said, oh, what a night. So we went to pray in that synagogue. And then we, we had our group, 12 people. We went to pray. And I started weeping because all those talits, very old, yellow, they were hanging there from the people. And all of them are gone. And the synagogue was locked and dusty. So I pray life in that place. We pray life in that place. So dusty, and then mold. And okay, guess where we are? In the synagogue. There was a day that we had 40 people. 40 people. But we do not say to everybody in open about Yeshua, we say one by one. One by one, we love. First, they have to love us. And then, we tell what happened. If they don't love you, they don't want to hear you. If they don't see obedience in the Shabbat in you, they don't want to hear that. If they see you eating, you know, things that you shouldn't eat, they don't even will consider but they end up coming to my kitchen to cook. Can we cook for Shabbat here? And do this is a compliment. Can we just cut the things here? And then can we put the, all the food for Shabbat in your place overnight and heating overnight over those big pla plates and, and smell of food everywhere? And we had 40 people. And they started sing, asking. They don't want to hear a woman sing it. And then they ask Elihana to sing. A revival is taking place, hallelujah. But it starts with love. So, you know, and now the persecution is started against us, all of us. They, you are not going to meet here. No. In the day that you meet, we're going to have an egg hunting. Then they lock the door. So they lock the door and egg hunting, Easter, Baba. Now in the Pesach, they want to do a garage sale in the place that we want to do Pesach. So persecution comes. I see the anti-Semitism there. And uh, we, we sit down together. We, we hug each other. We cry together. And I ask them, are we in a ghetto here now? Maybe we are in a ghetto. We don't have a voice. When you complain about something, we, they didn't have didn't want to open the place for us to put the Torah in the, in the place. So what happened? The guy was upset and he knocked like this. They got him a fine of $100. I went to the office. I said, the guy didn't want, didn't want to open the door for me. And I don't understand why. I went with Elihana. I got a fine $100. Why I'm sharing this persecution? Persecution is coming. And we had to at this Pesach, they didn't give us a place. But that's just to share what's going on. Adonai put us there. The first day, they knock at the door. Israel, come pray with us, my son. And they say, what is our savior? And Israel said, I want to sleep. I don't want to go. And I, and I started crying because they were prophesying, where is our savior? 
We have the Savior. You know. The arm of Adonai has been revealed to you. Please put that word in Isaiah 53, 1. To whom? Who has believed our report? Right? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? It was revealed to you. It was revealed to me. So today we are trying to reveal the arm of the Lord. So I start asking about the blood. Because without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. There is no prayer. There is no mitzvah. There is nothing that you can do to redeem yourself. So I, that's the fight. The fight is that because there is no Beth Hamikdash, no more temple, no more sacrifice. The only one sacrifice, Yeshua, the Lamb of Elohim. Pray for revelation in that plate, that Zroach, the arm of Adonai, be revealed to them. Let's pray now. Let's pray now. Father, in the name of Yeshua, we pray that in this Pesach, when they look at the lamb and they call the, that piece of bone, Zroah, the arm of the Lord, let them understand Yeshua being the Mashiach, the arm of the Lord. We pray in the name of Yeshua for revelation at the tables and at the houses, the dreams and visions to our precious people of Israel and all the diaspora in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen, hallelujah. One more song. Elihana, get ready. Go start getting ready. We work together. Amen. How many of you are going to bring a sacrifice tomorrow? Bring an envelope. Tomorrow, Monday. Yeah. So just put yourself in prayer and ask Adonai how much I have been blessed and bring to this house that is a house of truth because the truth is here in spirit and in truth and bring an offering. Amen? And, and this is the first fruit that should be brought. And I know precious rabbi is a very generous man, but I just didn't count with this message. But Adonai told me to tell you in my heart this morning, don't forget. Amen? Not for anybody, because we ourselves don't need, but you need, because you need to show him your gratitude for how much you have been blessed, and then according to your blessing, and he is going to bless you. This didn't change, and this is, not, this is not church preaching, okay? I'm sorry, guys. This is not, this is real Bible teaching, okay? Because the church is coming to the truth. The church is waking up. we got to pray for our brothers and sisters. They are waking up. I have many friends and pastors. They return to the Shabbat. They return to celebrate the feast. There are many good churches there. They are celebrating already, starting getting out. No more egg hunting to the kids. No more colorful eggs to the kids. Repentance is coming. Revival is coming. And you are a vessel of restoration. You got to bring the restoration to everyone. Not to judge. We don't want to judge. But just want to take them out in love. Amen. Because they are loving. The same way Adonai, he wants you to have the eyes of Yeshua. What's the eyes of Yeshua? We see people with the eyes of Yeshua in different levels. We don't see people with, with the, to judge. You know, but we see how he's working. You see, those that have Yeshua, but they don't have the spirit. Those that have the spirit, but they needed to understand the feast. And a lot of things, people, but you are in a different level. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are going to uh, go for the next song, Veishanda. And Veishanda is a traditional song of Pesach. So tomorrow, we don't know, Sunday, Monday, we don't know if we're going to have sound system. So we're going to sing today the song of Pesach. And this song, this song is, sung, is sung in every, every congregation, in every con uh, Pesach. Why? Because it speaks about that they want to destroy us, but the mighty hand of Adonai has delivered us. 
And it's always like this. Like Rabbi Oli say, that's what about the, all the feasts. They want to destroy us. Adonai operated miracles, and then we eat. <laughs> right? But, but we, with this congregation, we have pizza always, because we always eat. <laughs> we live in a constant pizza here. <laughs> All right. So that's the song, the Ishamda. That the Ishamda. Uh, and in that song is a traditional song of Pesach. And also there are the cup of Elijah. How many of you know about the cup of Elijah? The cup of Elijah stays there. But it's interesting that the Jewish people, they believe that Elijah will come first. And the spirit of Elijah, you are Elijah, we are Elijah. Actually, our last name is Elijah. When we made Aliyah, they were like, mm-hmm. Maybe Elijah. And, and that's how it is. Elijah is you. You are Elijah. You are Elijah. We are Elijah. The spirit of Adonai gave us boldness. Amen? So, of course, many believe also that Elijah is one of the two witnesses, right? So, we wait for the spirit of Elijah to be poured down. And the Jewish people, they sing that song, Eliyahu Hanavi. You know? They sing it with the kids. And we are waiting that the Spirit of the Lord be poured out on the churches, on the Jewish people, and everyone's salvation will be poured down. His, uh, his arm will be revealed. And then we are going to see the Messiah. Baruch Adad Hashem Adonai. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us sing together. And Adonai stood by us. He stood for us. Hallelujah. The Hishamda. Amen. Hallelujah. And Adonai, Kadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed is He. He saves us all the time. Until today, <laughs> they try to destroy us. But Adonai, always by His mercy, His promise stands for His people, Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Redeemed Israel, let's rise up on our feet and sing together in Hebrew and English. Oh, 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 
the Holy One, blessed is He. He redeems us, delivers us all the time. Shalom. We want to give you a chance. Um, how many enjoyed Dr. Hadassah and Elihana? Can we tell them we love them? Thank you all for coming out and being a part. Um, appreciate you all being here today. And this is, you know, we were really blessed to have you at Sukkot last year. And so that's a high holy day. That's a great celebration. So I was on the phone. You can be seated for just a moment. I was on the phone speaking and hearing and checking on Elihana, seeing how things were. And I said, well, it would be great to have you at Pesach. She said, well, we would come. I said, you would come? She goes, oh, yeah. She said, we would come. She said, let's see how things work out. And so we were blessed to be able to have you both. And it's been a real blessing just to, if you think they're fun here, you should just hang out with them. They're a riot. I, I, I love it. And so, uh, yeah, and we try to feed them. That's the Jewish thing, you know. We feed you. So, in fact, is there oneg today? I don't know. I think. I don't know. But, no, there's no oneg today. Oh, there is oneg. See? So, yeah. So, see? So, yeah. so we want to show them that we love them. And uh, if I would like to ask you, because their ministry is worldwide. There's, I can't begin to describe to you how many countries that they've been to and the people that they see. The last place you were at was Thailand or where? Singapore, Hong Kong, Thailand, so Indonesia, they travel, um, thousands of people come, their, their ministry is amazing, and I'm always blessed, we're honored to have you in the house, and uh, so we, we, it's because we made a connection many years ago, and so it was such a blessing, so thank you, and, and they tell me, yeah, you can tell them you love them. They, they tell me, they say, this is, haven't you said this is your favorite? You've said this is your favorite community. So they say they love our community. So, and they, well, thank you. So, no. so we appreciate you. I'm going to give you a chance to sow into their ministry. So guys, they have the baskets here. Um, if you are making a check out, what should they make it out to? Restore Israel. So if you're making a check, you can put cash. All of this is going to go to them. So, uh, and just to clarify too, I know um, our our big, you can bring an offering Pesach, and I ask you to do that. But our big offering is Shavuot, or uh, not Shavuot, uh, first fruits. So, first fruits will be the um, we'll announce that it's coming up. It'll be it'll be soon, of course. So, but it'll be that Sunday after that following Shabbat. 
but watch your bulletins. First fruit is the big offering, and then the second is on Shavuot, but also bring an offering on Pesach. It's just the way we do things. So um, it's funny how you taught there because I teach the same thing. They're portals, they're windows. That, uh, they're, there's a concept within Judaism called Parnas. Have you ever heard of Parnas? Parnas is that there are seasons to ask for things. This is the season, just as there are seasons to plant for a farmer, this is the season to ask for, for wealth. So that's a blessing, right? So, you know, there are seasons that he says, ask, and you shall receive. So this is our chance to sow back. Excuse me. I just want to say this verse that I always, I came to America, and I had nothing, and I remember Adonai with everything I had before I, I left Brazil. This was many years ago. I don't even want to say maybe 35 years ago. But uh, the Lord gave me the verse, remember the Lord your God, that he's the one that gives you the ability to produce wealth and to prosper. So he will confirm his covenant that he swore to your forefathers as it is today. Remember the Lord your God. That he's the one that gives you the ability. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. So we would encourage you to do that. And uh, we're going to send you out here shortly. If you're up for it, I felt uh, my brother shared with me and I felt this too. If you want prayer, um, just quickly, I don't want you to come and give them your life story. But I know we tend to do that. We want to explain everything going on and then say, will you pray? Because this is where it started. And then we go on for 20 minutes. We do that as people. So I'm going to ask if you want prayer today. Um, there's an anointing on these two. And so if you want prayer, you don't have to tell them anything. If it's for health, say just health. If it's for peace, say just peace. But I'm going to ask before we leave today that um, if you could prepare some music, some slow music. We don't have any musicians today. But if you can, we're going to, after the offering, and you can go ahead and pass the, the baskets. But I'm going to give you a chance to be prayed for. And we're going to let the ladies, if you have the strength to do it, are you strong enough today? Your strength to do it. Amen. Praise Messiah. So we're going to call them up. Guys, can I ask somebody to take our, take our bima and just move it out of the way here so we can call people up? So if I can get a couple guys. Oh, but you're going to, pl- you're going to pray for them. I want, you to, I want you to pray for them. So, so we'll have them play something. Guys, can you just slide it? Just pick it up. Don't slide it. It'll scratch the floor. So just pick it up and bring it back. Um, would you ladies please come? She shared many stories with me of how she's in the, uh, she's receiving treatments in the hospital. And she shared with me how many times the people will come and they have a little curtain there where they treat you. And she said the people will come and they'll say, can you pray for me? How are you? And she said, all she does, she said, is she smiles. And everybody sees her smile, and they say, can you pray for me? And then another will come, and they'll peek their head through the curtain and say, excuse me, can you pray for me? And she said, before you know it, she said, we have a ministry in the hospital where she's being treated. People are coming and asking, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. So wherever you go, wherever you go, and that's us that he's calling up wherever we go to pray. So I'm going to ask, would you stand? And then we're going, I'm going to dismiss. If you have to go home, looking forward to seeing you on Monday. Make sure you get your tickets before you leave. George is here. Um, If you don't have your tickets, you need to get them. But I want to say a blessing over you. And um, if you want prayer today, I'm just going to ask you, the ladies will be here, and we're we're going to have you line up and get prayed for, and then let somebody else come up, okay? But I promise you, they have an anointing of Messiah. How many would like to have a fresh touch from Adonai this morning? So I encourage you to come up. Okay, let's say the blessing. Mike 10, if you give me a little reverb on it. Hallelujah. Ivrecha donai vagish marecha. Ya era donai panavilecha. Vihune reka. Isai adonai. 
Hanavileka, the Yasem Leka, Shalu. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh lift his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift his face and may he shine upon you and give you much shalom in the face of Sar Shalom Yeshua HaMashiach. And all his people said, Amen, Amen. Shabbat Shalom. If you're, if, I'm going to ask if you're leaving to do so quickly.